800-899-8443. That's 800-899-8443. Welcome to a discussion of radical fundamental principles of freedom, rational self-interest, laissez-faire capitalism, and individual rights. The Yaron Brooks Show starts now. All right. Today I want to talk about America first. Big slogan of the Trump campaign. Uh, and uh, what does it mean? What does it mean when we say America first? What do we mean by that? Uh, particularly in the realm of foreign policy. What what does a foreign policy of America first look like? What would you what would you say? What would be the first thing you would do if you were in charge of an America first foreign policy? What should Trump do? What should the Trump administration do? Is it doing it? Is the Trump administration today an America first foreign policy administration? Great slogan, great idea, placing the interest of America first. But is it actually happening? And what does it actually mean? What are America's interests? All right. You can uh, chime in. I'm curious what you think America First actually means. 888-900-3393. 888-900-3393. Uh, what do you think? What would you do if you were running American foreign policy? If you were in charge of an American First foreign policy? And you know, what do you think? What do you think of Trump? I mean, what do you think of uh, Trump so far on foreign policy? He just spent uh, he just spent a few days in Europe, uh, the G20 meetings, this big twenty, a, a, a big meeting of the uh, largest economies in the world, the twenty largest, eighty percent of world GDP is represented by twenty uh, by those twenty countries. Uh, had a meeting, met with Putin, gave a speech in Poland. Um, we've seen him uh, do a trip to Saudi Arabia, gave a big speech in Saudi Arabia, danced with the sheiks. That was pretty cool, huh? Um, pretty bizarre, I'd say. What do you think? What do you think? What would, what would a, an America First foreign policy look like? And is Trump living up to the slogan that he ran on? I mean, I think to a large extent he won the election. On the idea, this idea of America First. Uh, you know, enough. Enough of America following. Enough of this Obama kind of um, foreign policy strategy of America taking no initiative, of America basically uh, groveling before its, its friends, groveling before its enemies, bowing to the king of Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, denouncing or, or putting down America as exceptional, and really being a follower. So Americans resented that, I think, and, and, and rebelled against it. And I think when Donald Trump talked about America first, people responded to it positively. It's like, yeah, finally. Somebody's going to stand up for us. And, and there's also some resentment towards the foreign policy of George Bush, the, the kind of foreign policy that was going to bring democracy to the world. And we were going to, you know, Operation Iraqi Freedom, we were going to give freedom to the world and intervene everywhere and uh, do it all for the sake of the Iraqis or the Afghans. Or Again, uh, in some sense, kind of grovel before enemies and appease them. And, and Donald Trump, presented himself as a rejection of all that. And hey, you know, he said during the campaign, in some of the best parts of his campaign, in my view, he said, well, why should we pay to defend South Korea? South Korea is a rich country. Why don't they defend themselves? Why should we pay to defend Japan? Japan's an even richer country. Why don't they defend themselves? What about Europe? This NATO stuff, Trump told us. Shouldn't the Europeans pay their fair share? And, and, and should we even stay a part of, Europe, of, of NATO? Should we really fight to protect Ukraine or, or whatever? Right. So is this, is this, is he followed through on all, any of this? Is that America first foreign policy? What is an America first foreign policy? What, what would it look like? What, what, how do we, how would we define it? How do we know if Trump was following it or not? And, and what do we, how do we assess? How do we assess the first what, uh, six months of the Trump presidency when it comes to these questions of foreign policy, when it comes to placing America's interests first. So uh, that's all. What, what, what I want to talk about today uh, in, in the show, primarily in the first part of the show. So uh, another spin on this, right? Does America first foreign policy include protecting us, and I put protecting us in quotes, Protecting us from foreign trade. 
does an American first foreign policy include the idea of trade and whether, you know, whether uh, the Chinese and others were, were dumping, uh, dumping steel in the West and, and whether that was, uh, that was bad and whether we needed to do something. And if we needed to do something, what was it that we needed to do? What should be done? So is that part of America first? Is, is the idea of protecting us from bad trade deals, do you think, part of this uh, whole America First stuff? So, again, uh, curious to see what you think, 888-900-3393, if you have any thoughts on this America First idea of this whole America First concept and, and what it might or might not represent. So uh, let, me, let us know. Let us know. Let us know. All right. Uh, let me start with this. Let me start with this idea. To do America first, we first have to decide what America is. America first means, I guess, that we need to pursue America's interests. But what are America's interests? America is a country, a country of 350 million people. We all have different interests. We have different values. We have different ideas. We don't agree on almost anything. So what are America's interests? And I have a problem generally with these, these attempts to have kind of collective interests, uh, the public interest, the social good, the, 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 you know, all of our, the, you know, what's good for the country. Well, what does that mean, good for the country? What does that mean? Because, again, all of us are individuals. All of us have different goods. All of us have different values. All of us have different benefits. So to understand what the public good is, we have to we have to dig deeper, right? What is America? What does America first actually mean? What is America in this context? Is America the 350 million individuals? And in what sense should the government try to look after our interests? And this really goes to the heart of it. In what sense should the government seek to pursue our interests? America is a unique country. In America, we don't believe the government is responsible for our interests. We don't expect the government to provide us with food. We don't expect the government to provide us with housing, although to some extent we do, I guess. America is changing. We, don't, we didn't in the past expect the government to provide us with health care. Again, maybe that's changing. We expected the government primarily, and this is the idea at the founding of the country, we expected America primarily to protect us, to protect, to protect our, us physically, to protect us from crooks and criminals and, and, and bad guys of, of uh, various varieties. But generally, in America, we expect government to leave us alone. We expect the government to protect our rights and otherwise leave us alone. And the sense in which... The government is there to protect our interests, to, uh, to, to pursue our interests, to make our inter to, to help us to help us. It's in defending us, in protecting us. It's in protecting our rights, our liberties, our freedoms. So what America means in terms of the government is really the government is our agency, it's our servant, it's our agent in protecting us from crooks, criminals, bad guys of various forms, hackers, people who would do us harm. So to me, what America first means is that placing the individual rights, the right to life, liberty, property, and the pursuit of happiness of Americans first in international affairs. It means protecting the life and property of Americans from those who would threaten the life and property, our life and property. It means protecting us from foreign invaders, from foreign agents, from terrorists. All right, when we get back, we're going to take a quick break now. When we get back, we're going to talk about, okay, what does that imply? What does it imply to protect our life and property in terms of how we behave internationally, in terms of what we do internationally? What does America first means if America first means the protection of individual rights 
of American citizens. All right, you're listening to the Iran Brooks Show. We'll be right back after this short break. Clear. Selling author, prolific media contributor, PhD in finance. This is the Iran Brooks Show, the Blaze Radio Network. I don't know if you saw on your call screen or be of John uh, yeah. from Bucks County wants to talk about America first. Good. If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. While typing your blog, while getting your back whacked, while sipping a pina colada. Pretty much any time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. The Blaze Radio Network and the Jeff Fisher Show. Podcasts. This is Judy Jasser. Welcome back to Reform This. And on-demand programming. Here we are, back together again. The Rabbi Daniel Lappin Show. All at theblaze.com slash radio. Paid monetary spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you are a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Attention Zarelto and Pradaxa users. If you or a loved one has taken Zarelto or Pradaxa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial Financial compensation. Zorelto and Pradaxa are prescribed blood thinners used to prevent blood clots and protect people from strokes. If you have taken Zorelto or Pradaxa and been hospitalized for internal bleeding, call now. 800 630 6720. Serious bleeding has led to numerous cases of hospitalization and death. If you or a loved one was hospitalized for serious internal bleeding or a stroke after taking Zorelto or Pradaxa, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Call 800-630-6720. That's 800-630-6720. Again, 800-630-6720. This is an advertisement. Paid non-attorney spokesperson. Injuryhelpdesk.com is responsible for this advertisement. Principal Office, Las Vegas, Nevada. The Yaron Brooks Show. But in all of human history, you are nothing but a pawn to be used for some greater purpose, for a purpose greater than yourself. You meant nothing. Nothing as an individual. It was the group, it was the collective, it was the leader, it was God, it was everything. And that changed with the founding of America. America is the first country in human history to recognize the fact that the individual's life is his. The Yaron Brooks Show, Sundays 2 to 4 Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. The IRS is the most feared agency in the world. You've heard ads from other companies offering to help taxpayers only if they owe over $10,000. Here at Platinum Tax Defenders, we're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and we're proud to be one of the only tax firms in the country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. So whether you owe just a few thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands, call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we may even be able to reduce your tax debt down to a small fraction of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800-579-4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800-579-4967. 800-579-4967. 30 to we come back. We're Opelka with Mike Opelka. Mayor de Blasio, you are the jack wagon of the week, sir. And I know you're not flying coach because I know some radical liberal group is paying for a first class ticket for you to fly across so you can be there instead of home doing what you should be doing, taking care of a grieving family and maybe, just maybe, rallying the men and women of the NYPD. You are Opelka on the Blaze Radio Network. You're listening to the Iran Brooks Show on the Blaze Radio Network. So today we're talking about what America First means, what it would look like in foreign policy, and is the question, Donald Trump really an American First president? Does he have any understanding of what America First implies and what a foreign policy of America First would look like? Now, to me, America First means being America. America means 
protecting the individual rights of its citizens. An American first foreign policy is a foreign policy that places the well-being of Americans in the sense, in the sense that government is responsible for our well-being only in one dimension. Government is not there to protect our health care. Government is not there, even in my view, to protect our economic well-being. Government is there to protect us from violence, from crooks and thieves and invaders and terrorists, arbitrate disputes, and otherwise leave us alone so that we can produce, we can innovate, we can create. We do that best when we are free, when we free the human mind. Government is there to protect our freedom, our freedom from coercion, our freedom from force, our freedom from authority, so that we can pursue the rational values that are necessary for us to flourish, for us to pursue our happiness. So when I think America first foreign policy, I think protect us. Kill the bad guys. Get rid of the bad guys. Make sure the bad guys don't destroy American lives and property. That's the primary responsibility of the American government. That's it. When it comes to foreign policy, that's really it. Protect us from those who would do us harm and put no other consideration before that. And the question is, is that what Donald Trump means by America first? Is that what all these nationalists like Steve Bannon mean by American first? Is that what they're doing? In terms of their behavior, is that what he did in Saudi Arabia? Is that what he did in Israel? Is that what he did in Poland and in, and in uh, the G20 meeting? Is that idea of protecting our freedoms, of protecting us from harm, is, does that seem like what is guiding Donald Trump's foreign policy right now? All right, we got a couple of callers, uh, and uh, we're going to start out with John. John uh, from Bucks County. I don't know, Bucks County where? Hey, John. Hi, how are you? Good. Where's Bucks County? Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. All right. So uh, what's your interpretation of this America First idea? Okay. I, th I think that uh, I think he is following an America First policy. I think um, I think really the, the difference between him and uh, Barack Obama and even George Bush before him, um, you know, the country was founded on certain principles. And uh, the Bushies were more like one world order for the corporatist kind of people. The Obama and Clinton people were more one world order for social aspects. And that leads down a whole rabbit hole of stuff like they have in Europe where you have no borders. And, you know, if everybody's a citizen of the world, then how can you have a border and stop people from coming into your country? And then that, that, that erodes everybody's freedoms who are actually people who are born in the country. I have nothing against legal immigration. I have nothing against, you know, immigrants. I think they're they're great. They're great, you know. If they're regulated the way they should be, and they're you know allowed in, and you know at, at the at the pace we need them. So let me let me ask you this. Job. Let me ask you this, John. Do you think him going to uh, before we get into immigration, which is a different topic? I want I want to avoid immigration no, today. No, it's not really a different topic. So, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Uh, do you think going to Saudi Arabia and dancing with the king of Saudi Arabia and giving a speech in front of people, who a majority of whom are clearly funders of organizations like ISIS and and uh, and Al Qaeda and and uh, the rest of the terrorists who want to kill Americans and destroy us. A king of Saudi Arabia who uh, prays at mosques, who, who 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 basically funds the creation of mosques all around the world that are preaching Sharia law, that are preaching the the, the, the destruction of America. Do you think that's America first? Yep, I do, and I'll tell you why. When did Saudi Arabia do like the Saudi Arabians do? When they come here, they sit at our table and they have a, you know, they eat with us and they, they, they do our customs. Their customs have a little dance when they do whatever. Sure. Barack Obama sure. did it. Whoever else sure. was there sure. kissing their butt did it. Bush did it. But the point of that is you can't be an isolationist either. Uh, I mean, we could stick our head in the sand and just say, look, we're just going to bomb you because we feel like it. But he was trying to make a bridge. He, said, he stood in front of all those people and said, look, you got a problem. You're, you're, you're funding these people. And and it's got to stop. Yeah. I mean, do you think Obama did that? I don't think Obama stood in front of him. Oh, no, I'm not comparing Trump Jordan. to Obama. Obama clearly was not America first. I started off the program by admitting that. So I don't think I don't think the comparison should be <clears throat> between Trump and Obama. I think the comparison should be okay, between Trump like and what should be done. And and in my view, you don't visit an enemy state. And in my view, Saudi Arabia is an enemy state. You don't visit an enemy state and behave as if they're your best friends, and, and behave as if they are the solution to the problem, 
rather than instigator of the problem. If you if you want to okay, deal with ISIS, started, if you want to deal with Al Qaeda, you have to acknowledge Saudi Arabia's responsibility for it. Now nah, he started he started a dialogue. He has he has acknowledged. You don't dialogue. It. You don't dialogue with Nazis. You don't dialogue with Islamists. You don't dialogue with jihadis. How do you dialogue with jihadis who want to kill you? What's the dialogue? Funding the jihadis. Saudi Arabia doesn't fund jihadis. Did I say they didn't fund jihadis? No. So how do you dialogue with people who fund? It, Kill us okay, less. He's dialoguing, he's telling them, look, you're funding. He's telling them you're funding people. It's got to stop. All right. Okay. Trying to set it up so that it does stop. Right. All he right. didn't build the problem. He just he's just been president for what six months. I'm, this has okay. been going on for how long? So, Bush so John, if, if that's... Barack Obama's been over there. Hillary's been over there. Forget the Obama and party. Hillary. Forget they lost, right? We have a president. We have to evaluate this president based on, on an ideal, not based on Obama. Nice. Losers like Obama and Hillary. Nice Who cares about Obama and Hillary? I agree with you, John. If you went there, if you went there to give them a warning... It would be nice if they could forget they lost. I don't think they can forget they lost. I think that's a big problem. No, the big okay. problem is that, that too many of us won't hold Trump to a proper standard, and we're going to get, mm-hmm. we're going to get, you know, we're not going to get an, an America first, uh, an America first foreign policy with Trump because we won't hold him because we, we excuse everything that he does. We don't hold him to a high standard. We, we justify him. John, I really appreciate your call. Thanks for calling. And I agree with you on this that's point, true. right? If Donald Trump went to Saudi Arabia and said, stop this, and if you don't stop it, you will feel the full wrath of the American military. And if you don't stop this, we will stop you. We, and, and here's a deadline. You got six months. You got a year. And maybe that was sent behind closed doors, but I'm willing to gamble. I'm willing to bet my entire net worth that it wasn't. That he, like every other president in the past, talks a good talk, and then is a wimp when it comes to those face-to-face meetings. I am willing to, 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 to bet anything that at the end of the day, nothing will change with the Saudis. Nothing will change with the Qataris. Nothing will change with the rest of the Middle East just because, you know, he went and gave a speech. I wouldn't go there. I believe an American first foreign policy means you don't go to Saudi Arabia. You define who your enemies are. And you define who your friends are. And you tell your enemies, we're not treating you like friends. We're not treating you like associates. We're not treating you like civilized members of society. We are shunning you. We do not visit you. You're not invited to us. Don't necessarily bomb you either. But you're not our friends. You're not part of this. And if you don't behave yourselves, then you might be bombed. If you don't stop funding the people killing Americans, then you might be bombed. But that differentiation between friends and foes is essential to an America-first foreign policy. Four, You're listening to the Ron Brooks Show. Two, we'll be right back. One. On the Blaze Radio Network. I've still got John listed. His, yes. Uh... Uh, no, he hung up. I'm oh. sorry. Um, with calls like that, is that okay? Or do you want us to kind of... No, yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's uh, become the ground zero of yeah. Sunni Shia divide. Um, is it at all possible to turn your gain down just a tiny bit? Sure. It's peaking a little bit. Keep its foothold in the Middle East against American interests at whatever cost How's that? necessary. That's better. Thank you. On demand. Download episodes at theblaze.com slash radio. SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Paid monitoring spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto and Prodexa users. If you or a loved one has taken the blood-thinning drugs Zarelto or Prodexa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. Zarelto. 
Delto and Prodexa have been linked to internal bleeding, strokes, and pulmonary embolisms. If you or a loved one has taken these blood thinning drugs and have been hospitalized for internal bleeding, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Lines are open 24-7. Call 800-553-4751. That's 800-553-4751. 800-553-4751. You could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. 800-294-1788. They've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. If you're struggling with credit card debt, Consolidated Credit Credit programs will teach you how to get out and stay out of debt. Call 800-294-1788. 800-294-1788. That's 800-294-1788. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services or by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM8031. Services are primarily educational in nature. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-803-6962. to come back. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one -on -one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-803-6951. That's 1-800-803-6951. Don't miss Pat and Stu. I drove a Mercedes for a while that uh, someone else owned, and they have a nice, pretty good sized screen on them. Is that your way of saying you stole a car? <laughs> I, I, saw, saying I drove a car for a while that somebody else owned. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty nice screen. And the police say. called it Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> they don't call it that if they don't know. Pat and Stu, weekdays at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. Yaron Brook. All right, we're talking about America first, what that means. And, and my essential point here is that America first means that, the, that it's a reflection of the only purpose of American government is to protect us, to protect our rights. And if you don't understand individual rights, if you don't understand that the job of government is to protect our freedom, our freedom to act, our freedom uh, to pursue property, our freedom to pursue happiness, our freedom to live, then you can't really have 
a, a proper foreign policy, you, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. And nobody gets it. And, and stop calling me and telling me about Obama and about Clinton. I agree. They're lousy. They have no foreign policy. I indeed would say even more than that. I would say that America has not had a consistent foreign policy since World War II. One of the reasons we lost every single war since World War II. We have no conception of what a foreign policy one could even argue for, 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 for probably 150, 200 years. A proper foreign policy, a foreign policy that protects America, that doesn't establish empire, that doesn't bring democracy to the world, that doesn't appease our enemies. A real foreign policy that is focused on the individual rights of Americans and the freedom of Americans and protecting that freedom. That kind of foreign policy. I don't think exists because I don't think the understanding of individual rights, the understanding of the purpose of the American government, I don't think that exists. And I certainly don't think Trump has any of those characteristics. I don't think Trump has a clue what America first foreign policy. He has a certain instinct that came out, certain emotions that came out during the campaign that I think were correct in terms of foreign policy. But once he appointed his advisors, once he appointed the you know people around him, the swamp took over, and and his foreign policy is in no fundamental way different than a foreign policy of the last ten presidents or, or five presidents or whatever the last forty years, which is a compromising, mealy mouth, middle of the road uh, foreign policy. It's it's not even strong as a Ronald Reagan foreign policy. And, and Ronald Reagan, I think, particularly in the Middle East, was pretty weak. All right, if, if you want in on the conversation, disagree with me or agree with me, that, that, that would be unusual. Uh, 888-900-3393, 888-900-3393. I come at every issue that revolves around government from the perspective of individual rights, from the perspective of the role of government being the protection of my freedom, your freedom. America's interests being the freedom of Americans, period. Not economic interests, not, I don't know, environmental interests, not, and, and that's the one thing, you know, that Trump did that was good, get us out of the Paris Accord. I'm all for that. That's wonderful that he stood up the G20 and, and stood up against them on this uh, global warming Paris stuff. That was terrific. Um, but, Foreign policy needs to be engaged in protecting our lives and property from foreign invaders, terrorists, and so on. 888-900-3393. All right, we've got Kevin on the line from Arizona. Wants to talk about America first versus Russia, which is a big topic given Putin-Trump uh, uh, meeting last week. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, hey, uh, Ron. Hey, congratulations on uh, your new uh, Blaze show. Congratulations, man. Well, I appreciate hey, that. Uh, Thank so, you. So, uh, you know what? Listening to you originally, I was going to agree. <laughs> I'm not a combative uh, uh, speaker, uh, but listening to you, I do think there is a, a difference uh, in the past four years. So, for, so first of all, let me say I'm, uh, out front. I enthusiastically voted for Trump. I donated money to him, and I'm an objectivist. But, however, I'm not a Trumpist. I thoroughly dis disliked his economics, his domestic uh, policies, and I thought the foreign policy was the ace. To yep. me, that was the big one. So yep. I am not happy. I, to me, it's a mixed case. I agree with him Saudi Arabia. Uh, to me, the bombing of Syria was just horrendous. Uh, we do not need to in, uh, intervene in that war any more than we are. Yep. But I think uh, I think the one thing that's making him different is the Russia. Uh, you know, I am not a cold warrior. Uh, you know, it's no longer the Soviet Union. I, I'm sure they have Soviet Union instincts. But I see him. I I actually prefer this detente. You know, why be at the nuclear switch with the, with Russia? If now I, I don't. I'm not saying we're partners or we sanction them. But, but isn't he sanctioning yeah, well, them? It, it, so, so let's no, take that, that point. Right? Let's take that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. He met with Putin. Out of the Putin, I, I've read the transcripts of what Tillerson has said and what, what Trump has said, and it came away basically saying, we're partners, we're going to work together. And Syria, we're even going to create a cyber unit that is going to be shared between uh, the U.S. And, uh, and Russia to, to go after cyber criminals, as, as if most of the cyber criminals in the world are not Russian. <laughs> I mean, it's right. so so isn't it? Aren't we sanctioning? Aren't we basically saying Putin's basically a good guy? There's a lot of stuff we can work together with him. We have shared goals. And let's 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 go and, and, and work together with the Russians uh, to achieve all this shit stuff. Isn't that about as big of a sanction as you could give Putin? 
You know, that is a great point. It really is. <laughs> I mean, my view, let me tell you what my view on Russia is. I don't want to go with, to war with Russia. I don't believe we need to go to war with Russia, and I don't believe Russia is a threat to the United States if the United States is strong. But I would not take a meeting with Putin. Putin's a murderer. He has blood in his hands. He starts wars. I would, I, just like Ronald Reagan identified the evil empire in the Soviet Union, I would say, look, on the world stage, Putin is a bad guy. He does bad things. Uh, but, you know, if he's, if he's in Europe, Europeans take care of it. We, we, you know, we're not going to go fight a war for Europe. And this, this relates to, t- k- uh, to NATO, which I'll get to in a few minutes. Um, but I would not take a meeting with Putin. I would not be friendly with Putin. I would not uh, uh, be negotiating ceasefires in Syria with Putin. Whose side are we on in Syria? I mean, this goes to your point about not intervening in Syria. Why are we negotiating with Putin about ceasefires in, in Syria? Who do we want to win there? Who, who are we trying to protect there? Um, the, the whole way in which he approaches Putin is a conventional, a compromising. Yeah, it's not Hillary Clinton who seemed to really want to send the Sixth Fleet or, or uh, McCain, your senator from Arizona, who wants to send oh, the no, Sixth no, Fleet no, into no. the Black Sea to start a war with the Russians. Yeah, I, I don't see yeah. any reason for that. But I do see reason to clearly articulate the case. This guy's a bad guy. This guy intervened in the, in the U.S. election, hacked a political party in the U.S., not my political party, but still a political party in the U.S., and that's unacceptable. And there are consequences to these things. And Putin, stand down. Stand down. And when you stand down, when you behave like a civilized human being in the world stage, then I'll meet with you. Until then, nothing. See, I believe in a completely different foreign policy than anything any American has probably ever practiced, maybe since since Thomas Jefferson went after the pirates in, in, in the Mediterranean. Um, I, I don't believe in this negotiation and, and diplomacy and being nice to your enemy and dancing with sheiks. And having two and a half meetings with a nasty, nasty, evil character like Vladimir Putin, who who kills his enemies, who who kills journalists, who you know, and and Trump during the campaign said, when when he was confronted about uh, confronted with Putin killing journalists, Trump said, "Well, everybody kills somebody, you know, we all do that." I mean, a moral equivalency completely between Russian government and the American government. Give me a break. So. Wait, so- can I add a point? Yeah, sure. Sorry, thanks. Uh, so, look, um, look, I get your point, but but I would say, first of all, Putin is not for the Union. His charter is not sure. to, I agree. you know, have an international socialism across the world. I get that. And, and we are not – he's got local, regional issues besides the United States. I get that. But uh, I, I'm interested in – you know, I, I, I learned a fact uh, uh, maybe a couple months ago, but I didn't realize that most – I think 85 percent – of ISIS fighters speak Russian, and, and that ISIS really is the that jihadism. It really is a, an issue, a challenge for yes. Russia. Yes. And so I, I, w- I would ask you, as an objectivist, it, is it more for the United States not to sanction but to participate in the destruction of ISIS with Russia, considering Russia is not? I, I don't consider Russia a Nazi Germany a conventional, you know. A, a I, I agree with you. Threat. It's not. A, it's not a direct threat to the United States, and and I agree with you. But this is this is the sense. The United States has the mightiest military force in all of human history. It's got the mightiest military force on the planet. ISIS is nothing. It's a blimp. It's a little group of nobodies in the middle of the desert. If we wanted to eradicate them, we need Russian help. Now, it's true. Russian views ISIS as a threat and wants to eliminate Sunni Sunni, uh, jihadis. But Russia is also an ally of Iran. It provides them with weapons. It provides them with new te- nuclear technology. Russia is an ally of North Korea. It's providing them with nu- nuclear technology. Russia is an ally of Syria and of Hezbollah by, by extension. Russia is an ally of other enemies of ours. So, no, I do not believe we should cooperate with Russia going after ISIS because I don't believe we, sh- we need to cooperate with anybody to go after ISIS. I think we could destroy, annihilate, eviscerate ISIS all by ourselves. And I would have some respect for Donald Trump if that's what he did. And during the campaign, he promised we're going to destroy ISIS. We're going to wipe them off the face of the Great. If he had done anything other than increase, you know, take, take our participation in the war from ISIS from, on, the, on the volume dial from 1 
to two or one and a half, I would like them to crank it up to eleven, right? And that's yeah. then I would then I would respect we we could eliminate ISIS. I've said this before, and you know, in two weeks, right? We could eliminate them if we really wanted to. We we we, we don't because we're cowards. We don't because we're, we're we're morally pathetic when it comes to our foreign policy and fighting wars. This is why we lose all the time. And, and we do not need Russia's help. We don't need Saudi Arabia's help. We don't need Iraqi help. We don't need anybody's help to do it. We just need to be committed to doing it and being willing to use this mighty military force that we have to protect Americans. That's what it's there for, to protect Americans, not to bring democracy to the world. I don't, I don't want you to confuse me with a George Bush. Sure. You know, I want to eliminate the enemies, and I don't think we need any help. I really appreciate the call, Kevin. Uh, thanks Thank for listening, you. Thank you. And, and keep on listening. Thanks for being open, uh, a, a Trump supporter who's open to criticism of Trump. That is good. That's being objective. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got Skyla and Ajun and, and I'm sure uh, uh, others, and there's lots to say still about this question about what is American first. You're just getting a hint now of what I think America first is. We'll get really into what I think America first foreign policy would look like after the break, uh, you're listening to the Iran Brook Show. Is clear military veteran and radical for capitalism. It's the Iran Brook Show on the Blaze Radio Network. Podcasts that relate to your life. And if the community bands together and says, we're going to help you, let's do this. And it can happen when you have the time to listen. This was a, a number on the spreadsheet, and it uh, it's a uh, you know the 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 accounts weren't weren't fully balanced there. Ready for download now or later. And that's how people look at it when they don't understand that life is sacred. Check out Matt Walsh at theblaze.com/radio, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Paid law attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Have you written a book and want to get it published? Then call Page Publishing at 800-733-9813 immediately. That's 800-733-9813. Page Publishing is looking for authors of all types of books. And unlike most publishers, Page Publishing will take the time to review each and every book submitted to them and give you their feedback. If they like what they read, they'll get your book into bookstores and for sale online at Amazon, the Apple iTunes Store, Barnes & Noble, and other outlets. They handle everything. Editing, cover design, copyright protection, printing, publicity, and distribution. So if you've written a novel, children's book, cookbook, inspirational work, poetry, or a biography and want to get it published, then you need to call Page Publishing and do it immediately. Call 800-733-9813 now for your free author submission kit. Again, for your free author submission kit, call 800-733-9813. That's 800-733-9813. Your road to fame and fortune could very well start with this simple phone call. Call Page Publishing at 800-733-9813 for your free author submission Kit. Monday through Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. What evidence did they have? Join Glenn and his team. Is there anybody here that thinks government gets it right that often? Inside the think tank. What they're not saying is, look, there was a warrant that targeted something within Trump Tower. We don't trust the intelligence community, and I think that's a disturbing thought. As they connect the dots on the news of the day. His connection is one degree separation from Vladimir Putin. Think Tank, Monday through Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on The Blaze TV. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. 
If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. 800-899-8443. That's 800-899-8443. The IRS is the most feared agency in the world. You've heard ads from other companies offering to help taxpayers only if they owe over $10,000. Here at Platinum Tax Defenders, we're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and we're proud to be one of the only tax firms in the country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. Sixty to a comeback. Thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands. Call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we may even be able to reduce your tax debt down to a small fraction of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800-579-4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800-579-4967. 800-579-4967. 30. The morning plays with Doc Upset. Coming up on the next program, an ingenious plan for Cal and an ingenious plan for ISIS. Wow, I can't believe you say that. No, no, those are two separate stories, oh, two different oh, okay, things. Okay. Plus, what seems like a TSA failure. So another failure. Yeah, pretty much. And what seems like a VA failure. So another failure. Yeah, a lot of failures coming up in the next program. The Morning Blaze, weekday morning, 6 to 9 Eastern, on the Blaze Radio Network. This is the Iran Brooks Show. All right, we're talking about America First today. What does it mean? And uh, I've been making the argument that America First means the protection of Americans' freedoms, the protection of the life and property of America. That should be what American foreign policy is all about. It should be the only goal of the American foreign policy, or at least the primary overwhelming goal of American foreign policy. We'll get to some other, one other at least goal. Uh, related to that. But the, the lives and property of Americans, that's it. The government is there to protect us. It's not there to manipulate us. It's not there to compromise. It's not there to be liked. It's not there to appease. It's not there to schmooze with Putin. Uh, who cares what the Russians think of us? What's important is that Americans are protected from, for example, Russian hackers, who, who I think are a threat, a threat to the life and property of Americans, particularly property. And it's the government's responsibility to help us protect our property. And if somebody is using cyber attacks, in other words, the Internet, to attack our property, it is the U.S. government's job to help protect it. And that means going to Russians and telling them to stop. Otherwise, there will be consequences. And you can figure out what those guys I don't believe you have to go into nuclear war with Russia in order for the consequences to have meaning. All right, we've got Skyla on the line. We don't have a lot of time before the break. Hey, Skyla, how's it going? Good afternoon, Dr. Brooks. Good afternoon. What's up? I would like to know how proper it would be to say instead of America first, America only. Yeah, I mean, I think that's right. I think it is America only. The job of the American government is to protect the lives and property of Americans, the individual rights of Americans. I I, I think America first makes more sense, and only in the sense that there are going to be contexts in which we have allies. There are going to be contexts in which we work with other countries. I'm not against allies. I just want to make sure our allies are really the good guys and not the bad guys. I would never consider Saudi Arabia or Russia an ally. I don't believe Russia was an ally even in World War II. I think one of the biggest mistakes in World War II was uh, the United States viewing the Soviet Union as an ally. And, uh, you know, so... America only is right as long as that doesn't mean in people's minds building walls, not, you know, ignoring other people, ignoring the world. I'm not what some people call, I hate this term, but what some people call isolationist. I don't think there is such a term. (laughs) What I am for is the United States getting involved in the world only, and this is your point about America only, only when it serves its interests, and those interests are the protection of the lives and property. And I'm repeating myself, I know, because nobody talks like this. Nobody talks about lives and property of American citizens. Nobody talks about individual rights. 
So it, it bears repeating over and over and over again. That makes sense, Skylar? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks for calling. Really appreciate it. So one of the first things I would do if I were president, and thank God I will never be president. One of the reasons is I'm an immigrant to this country. I wasn't born here, so I can't be president. The second one is I would lose in a landslide. But one of the things I would do if I were president was make a list. Allies, 30. friends, enemies, bad guys. And then maybe a third list, bad guys who are not enemies. And I would treat each list differently. And I would make the list public so the world would know who we consider our friends and who we consider our enemies and who we consider good guys and who we consider bad guys. Ten. Let the world know. That would be placing America first. All Five. right, you're listening to the Iran Book Show. We're going to be Three. right back, and we're going to take Two. a call from Arjun. One. You're listening to the Yurik Brook Show on the Blaze Radio Network. We're just flying by this hour. Yeah. <laughs> Reform this with Sudi Jasser, the most influential locus of power in the Muslim establishment is the royal family of Saudi Arabia. And President Trump, as much as he's trying to recalibrate some of the stability, uh, we call it that, regional stability in the Middle East, went to Saudi Arabia and started to awaken them to their need to counter terrorism. Reform this on demand. Download episodes at theblaze.com slash radio. SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Paid law attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto, and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zorelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Rebuild or replace transmission, $3,200. Anti-lock brake system, $1,000. Rebuild or replace engine, $2,400. Truth is, once your manufacturer's warranty runs out... It's all on you. Every last cent. Get protection for covered repairs with a vehicle service contract from Toco Warranty. Unlike other companies, with Toco, there's no down payment, and the monthly payments are really affordable. Not sure how long you're keeping your car? At Toco, you can pay as you go. Keep your hard-earned cash and call Toco Warranty right now at 800-219-6614 to save big money on covered auto repairs. Prices vary by vehicle, but for about the cost of a tank of gas per month, a Toco plan has your back on expensive covered car repairs. Monthly payments are very affordable. Get your free quote now. Call Toco at 800-219-6614. That's 800-219-6614. 800-219-6614. Cancellation fee may apply. Subject to eligibility. Not available in Missouri and Washington. Waiting period and deductible apply. Coverage provided and administered by Warren Tech Corporation or its affiliates. Not affiliated with any manufacturer or dealership. Visit tocowarranty.com for complete terms and conditions. This is a national health alert from the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one has diabetes, now, regardless of your age, if you have insurance, you may qualify to receive diabetic testing supplies with little to no out-of-pocket cost. If you call right now, you could get a free meter upgrade. In addition, we'll give you a free pedometer as our special gift to you. Call now. Call the 24-7 Diabetic Health Hotline now at 800-483-6631. 800-483-6631. The Jeff Fisher Show. We've been making fun of Mr. Alex Jones. I want to apologize uh, Professor Charles Tyler uh, presented his uh, findings. Fish are becoming transgender with contraceptive pill chemicals being flushed down household drains. So uh, we are actually turning the frogs gay. And Alex Jones was 100% correct. Alex, I'm sorry. You were right. The Jeff Fisher Show. Saturday mornings, 9 to noon Eastern. On the Blaze Radio Network. This is... The Blaze Radio Network at theblaze.com slash radio. Here's the latest. I'm Chuck Carroll. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Nikki Haley says President Trump wanted Russian President Vladimir Putin to know that the U.S. knew Russia meddled in the election. Yes, we know you meddled in our elections. Yes, we know you did it and cut it out. And I think President Putin did exactly what we thought he would do, which is deny it. Appearing on CNN State of the Union, Haley would not confirm whether the U.S. has taken action against Russia for interference, but said the U.S. won't ever fully trust the Putin-led country. 
Also on CNN State of the Union, former Obama administration defense secretary Ash Carter is admitting the past administration should have had a stronger response to Russian meddling. Carter also weighing in on revelations Trump and Putin discussed creating a joint cybersecurity unit to combat election hacking. This is like the guy who robbed your house proposing a working group on burglary. A ceasefire brokered by the United States and Russia is now in effect in southwest Syria. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson calls it a de-escalation agreement in the war-torn country. Trump also touting the agreement between the U.S., Russia, and Jordan this morning on Twitter. Hundreds are being told to evacuate as two major wildfires burn out of control in California near Santa Barbara. Officials say a fire near Camp Whittier that began yesterday has now burned 5,400 acres. No progress in stopping that blaze yet. Another fire affecting Santa Barbara and San Luis Obispo counties has now scorched 19,000 acres and is only 10% contained. And they say politics is a dog-eat-dog world. But what about a dog for mayor? The owners of a nine-year-old pit bull mix are trying to get it elected in Durham, North Carolina. The dog's name is Obi, and the owner says that as a lifelong Durham resident, Obi understands the woes of the city. You see, Obi was chained and abused in his early years, but is now genuinely kind and eager to lead, but a little slow in decision-making. That's the latest. I'm Chuck Carroll. Direct from the historic newsreels of... Selznick Talking Pictures. In cooperation with the International Broadcast Museum of East Sheboygan, this is a 30-second biography. Few people know that the beautiful Darrow Hannah was almost named Darrow Hannah Barbera because of the doink, doink, doink noise that was made when her parents pushed on her soft spot when she was a baby. The star of the big screen and mugshots across the country starred in such classics as Blade Runner, Splash, Steel Magnolias, and as the one-eyed assassin in Kill Bill. In 2013, she revealed when she was a child, medical professionals recommended that she be institutionalized and medicated, which explains her dating Neil Young. This has been a 30-second biography brought to you by the Blaze Radio Network. Direct from the historic newsreel zone. In cooperation with the International Broadcast Museum of East Sheboygan, this is a 30-second biography. Bill Clinton's brother from another mother and member of the English Parliament, the funkadelic singer George Clinton was famous for putting nanoparticles of quantum physics into modern dance music with such super hits as Atomic Dog, Spooky Action at a Distance, and Schrodinger's Cat, which won for Best R&B Single in 1983 and was later re released as General Tao's chicken in your grocer's freezer. George Clinton was once rumored to have solved Einstein's unified field theory, but couldn't read his handwriting the next morning when he sobered up. It was at that point that George decided to give up the funk. This has been a 30-second biography brought to you by the Blaze Radio Network. If you're not sure when you should listen to the Blaze Radio, here are some ideas. While enjoying family game night, while ordering your venti soy no whip latte, while photoshopping wedding pictures, pretty much any time is a good time to listen to the Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. Hi there, it's Doc, Chris, and Cal from the Morning Blaze. Podcasts. 100 Days of Trump. Because it's been an exciting 100 days. And on-demand programming. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of 40 Acres and a Fool here on the Blaze Radio Network. All at theblaze.com slash radio. Paid law attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Paid law attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski. 62 Quebec. Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this 
ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto and Prodexa users. If you or a loved one has taken the blood thinning drugs Zarelto or Prodexa and suffered an injury or even died, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800 553 4751 now. Zarelto and Prodexa have been linked to internal bleeding, strokes, and pulmonary embolisms. If you or a loved one has taken these blood thinning drugs and have been hospitalized for internal bleeding, you could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Don't be a silent victim. Time is limited to file your claim. Call now for free information and a free consultation. Lines are open 24-7. Call 800-553-4751. That's 800-553-4751. 800-553-4751. You could be entitled to substantial financial compensation. Call 800-553-4751 now. Welcome to a discussion of radical fundamental principles of freedom, rational self-interest, laissez-faire capitalism, and individual rights. The Yaron Brick Show starts now. And today we're talking about America first, what it means, and uh, whether Donald Trump is a representative of an American first foreign policy. I think I've argued so far that no, he's not. The idea is a good idea. Uh, it's not an idea he invented, but he projected some of some good ideas during the campaign around this idea of American foreign policy, and yet has not lived up to any of them, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I know some of you, I'm sure, will disagree. But what does America first mean? It means the protection of Americans. It means the protection of American citizens, the protection of their rights. It means the, the, the protection of their rights, the life, liberty, property, and the pursuit of happiness. That's what America first. It means protecting our lives and property from foreign invaders, from terrorists, from people outside the U.S., that's why it's foreign policy, who would do us harm. Now, we don't even do that inside the U.S. The U.S. government hasn't focused and hasn't uh, you know, made its primary function to protect our individual rights inside the United States for 100 years at least. So it's not surprising that it doesn't know what it's doing, doesn't know how to do it, doesn't know what to do when it comes to our foreign policy. So I'm going to take a quick call from Ajun, uh, who's calling from Hong Kong. This is this is like a, a becoming an international show. I think we got Malaysia the other day, and now we got Hong Kong. Very strong in um, in Asia. I don't know about, uh, you know, maybe we're going to have to get some European callers. I don't know where the European calls are. All right, Ajun, uh, you want to talk about terrorism and, uh, in the, you know, states, I guess, that fund terrorism? Uh, no, actually, oh. um, because I, I I think those are a little more clear cut. Okay. So, um, as you already said on the show, you know, if if it, if, if any more funny business goes on, you know, they should be dealt with. Yep. Um, actually, I'm a little more concerned about the um, the other states, which, uh, for example, steal uh, military stuff and uh, and um, are indirect threats like that, and not really funding terrorism. I see. So give me give me an example. Mind immediately. The one that comes to mind immediately is China. That. Uh, has been known to steal um, military technology, I understand. Yeah, no, so um, my view of China, I'm, I'm very mixed on you China. Already, you already dismissed uh, Russia earlier in the show, but that would be the other one I would think of a little bit. Yeah, so I wouldn't dismiss Europe either one of them. The Middle East. I wouldn't dismiss either one oh, of them. I, w- okay. I would be very clear that both of them are not our friends. They're not our friends for two reasons. One, because they have autocratic dictatorial regimes that oppress their own people. You cannot be friends with a dictator. You cannot be friends in the name of individual rights, in the name of protecting your own people, with somebody who does not respect the rights of their own people. So I would not consider China or Russia to be a friend of the United States. Um, the second reason is this reason you said they steal our stuff. They uh, they hack our computer I've systems. I've only heard about that from China. Oh, oh, Russia with the hacking. Okay, yeah. Or oh, China hacks as well. We we know very well that yeah. a lot of the hacking, maybe not political hacking, but a lot of the economic hacking that happens is happening out of China. And uh, there's lots of evidence that a lot of that hap- hacking actually it happens from units within the Red Army in China where they're developing, if you will, their cyber offensive uh, capabilities. And I we need to be clear. Stuff is actually, um, Go ahead. Sorry, I think the economic stuff is overblown by the protectionists because 
Yeah, no, I'm not talking about economic stuff. I'm talking about breaking into American computers and stealing stuff. That's not economic. It's a criminal act. And a criminal act funded by a foreign government is, in a sense, an act of war. So uh, I do not consider Russia and China friends. And I think that would be, uh, if again, if I were president, God forbid, I would make it very clear that I don't consider China or Russian friends. That doesn't mean they're enemies, right? It means that I'm wary of them, that I've got an eye on them, that if they do things like hacking and other stuff, they are repercussions, and those repercussions could be a cyber warfare against them. It means that I warn American companies when dealing with these countries that these are not rights-respecting countries and that their rights might be violated when they go over there. And don't expect us you know, to jump and protect your property if, if you're voluntarily going and dealing with them. Uh, it, it means that we put them on notice that if they don't behave, they could make the enemies list. And you don't want to make the enemies list because you, because of how powerful the United States is and what it would mean to be an enemy of the United States. I'll get to that in a few minutes. But, but in the case of um, both China and Russia, I mean, you could like push it, push it a little bit and you could say, OK, China is allies with North Korea, North Korea, you know, sure. through Iran. Is sure. So I think I think North China is allies with North Korea. Russia, you can push it the, through Syria because yeah, Syria is friends with Iran and Russia is friends with Syria. Yeah, but let's get clear. So Look, like all, a degree of separation from Iran. All of that, all of that is a consequence of American weakness. If we were not weak, if we were strong, if the consequences of messing with us were obvious, if we dealt with Iran the way Iran needs to be dealt with, then... China and Russia would behave themselves because neither China or Russia want a war with the United States, neither China or Russia want a conflict with the United States. They've got their own problems. The only reason they meddle with North, with, with, with North Korea, with Iran, with all, because of our weakness, we are giving them this opening. So the first thing that has to be established is American strength. The first thing that has to be established is, again, this definition. And I think definitions are really important. The identification of who are our friends, who are we going to fight with, who, uh, who are we kind of don't like but are not an enemy, and who is the enemy that is there to be destroyed. And we need to make an example of one of these enemies, for example, the Iranian regime. And if you make an example, everybody else will start behaving themselves. And uh, so, so I'm not worried about that. But, but, and, and I would also say that the fact that I don't consider China a friend doesn't mean I don't believe we should trade with them. I, you know, I believe trade is mutually beneficial. I believe we benefit from trade with China. As long as China is not an enemy of ours, there should be free trade with China and the same with Russia. I don't believe in sanctions. I don't believe in all this stuff. If somebody is an enemy to the point where you do not want to trade with them, then there should be no trade, zero. It should be a complete embargo. None of this we're going to sanction a little bit here and a little bit there. Again, that's the kind of wishy-washy compromising foreign policy that we have today that I would reject completely. So would you say that um, Russia and China aren't in that category because they're not suicidal and belligerent like Japan was in World War II? And That's the right. Islamists are That's now. right. The only right, extent to which China like and Russia act against America's interest is the extent that we allow it through our own weakness. Yeah. They they're, feel, not, they're not belligerent or, no. or suicidal. Or, no, um, they're not suicidal. They don't want to commit sense. suicide. They don't want to mutually assure destruction. They, they, if we don't assert ourselves, they will fill the vacuums that we create. You're seeing that, uh, you see that all over the world. Vacuums, you know, even, they're not going to be any vacuums. So if the United States doesn't assert its own interests, other people will assert theirs. Yeah, that, that, that makes it much clearer. Great, great. Thanks for calling us, Jun. They're, they're all pretty evil, but only the ones that are belligerent and suicidal are really a threat. Yeah, and some are more evil than others. I mean, let's, let's take China, for example. China's a, you know, it's an authoritarian and, and it's got a real problem, but it's not totalitarian. It has a, a large extent of free speech. I go there and speak regularly. I could not go to Iran. I could not go to North Korea. So there is a degree, a difference of degree between those. I would consider Iran and North Korea not only belligerent, but also on the scale of evil, they are much more evil than any of these other. I mean, on a different different uh, level uh, of evil where, where there's no freedom to the citizens or very little freedom for the citizens at all. And they are aggressively pursuing 
uh, actions that are anti-American in a sense of doing harm to the lives and property of Americans. So uh, that's how I would differentiate. And I think there's a big difference there. Does that make sense? Sure. All right. Thank thanks, you. Arjun. Uh, thanks for the call. Really appreciate it. Uh, as we said, you know, uh, my focus is always what kind of foreign policy will protect the lives and property of Americans the best. And my view is you don't tolerate people who are trying to kill you. You crush them. You destroy them. And you come home. You don't need to build democracies. You don't need a, a Marshall Plan everywhere you go. You deal with the enemy if they're truly an enemy. All right. Uh, you're listening to the Iran Book Show. We've got a commercial break in a few seconds. We'll be back. Uh, when we get back, you can call in 888-900-3393 to continue. The- good, not good, not good, not good. All right, we're back. What happened there? Ellie, are you there? Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Hey, I'm back on. I, I'm connected to you. Uh, you. You don't hear me? Because I can hear the show. I can hear the show. One, two, three. Can you hear me? I'm there. Okay. Yeah, I dropped dropped the internet for a couple of minutes. Uh, you know, I was afraid of this. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Okay. Bye. Four one six three six. You still have about two minutes till we come back. Okay, good. Yeah, because Tiger was with Kylie. Okay. Yeah. Double just gave us the, the feedback. By the way, didn't I say it was yeah. because of the money? <laughs> Man, we, we could have just ended it right when <laughs> Lawrence said it was about the, it's money. About the money. And Double was like, no, no. Uh, and then we went into this big You didn't know why. Ended. You said you didn't know. We, I, <laughs> we, well, we ended world. right back where we started. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> so we got it. It's because of the money. The Lawrence Jones Show. Saturdays at noon Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. Don't miss Pat and Stu. We'll share the number one reason you shouldn't give your child a smartphone. How about because they're children? That's it. Same reason we shouldn't give one to Jeff. Yeah. Jeffy also has a phone, and you don't want them That's on the same point. network. Yeah. Uh, and we'll also tell you why someone reported a Twitter user's snack to the police. Just because it looked like a human foot doesn't mean it was. <laughs> Everyone on Twitter just overreacted. Pat and Stu, weekdays at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. This is the Yaron Brook Show. All right, we're talking today about America First. And, and just to give you some context, you know, I, my beliefs when it comes to morality and ethics, I, I'm an egoist. I, I believe in rational self-interest. I believe that the purpose of my life is the pursuit of my happiness. I think this is very consistent with the founding of the country. Uh, my, my, my purpose of my life is not to sacrifice to others. It's not to make other people better. I am not my brother's keeper. I am my own keeper, and I might choose to help my brother, and I might not. 
I might choose not to help my, my brother. It should be my choice. I'm against the welfare state because I don't believe the government should tell me who to help and who not to help. I don't believe the government has the right to curse me into assisting some people. If I want to do that, there are voluntary ways to do it. And the same thing with foreign policy. I don't believe it's a government's job to go on and help people. Foreign aid. Trump just committed, I think, $600 million to foreign aid pro- pro- programs all over the world. I don't believe in foreign aid for anybody, including Israel. I'm a big fan of Israel's. But Israel doesn't need our foreign aid. They're a rich country. They're doing well. And, and it's not an issue of need, even if they needed it. Not our job. Not our job. You want to help Israel? Send them a check. You want to help poor kids in Africa? Send them a check. Not the government's job. The government is the agent, my agent, to protect me. Not to, not to be a social worker. Not the role of government. All right, so I want an American foreign po- f- f- America first foreign policy to be focused on, to be focused on protecting my life, my property. That's it. And that means, and I started to articulate this, and I, and I know Michael just called in from Tennessee, and he wants to talk about universal market income or universal basic income, I think he means. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take your call, Michael, but, but we're going to have to do it after the next break because I, I want to get, I want to say a few things still about foreign policy, and I'm happy to talk about universal ba- basic income, but not right now, all right? So what would I do? As I said earlier, an American first foreign policy, first thing you have to do, is to find and tell the world from now on, we in America will only use our military and will only use our Navy and our, and our, our, you know, our, our military force to defend the lives and property of Americans. We are not going to fight for you. We're not going to help you out just because you need our help unless helping you out is directly related to protecting the lives and property of Americans we ain't doing it. And in that context, I would list here the people we're willing to work with. I, for example, would leave the United Nations. I would immediately leave the United Nations. Maybe my first act as president, certainly in foreign policy, would be to abandon the United Nations, ask them to get on a boat and, and set up their headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. I think that would be fitting. Either there or maybe in, in uh, Damascus, Syria, they should have their headquarters there. Because that's the kind of UN policies. That's what they lead. They lead to devastation and death and, and destruction and poverty. They want the, the United Nations is so concerned with, with human rights that they have Syrians and Saudis and Venezuelans and Cubans on the Human Rights Commission. To, I would get out of the United Nations. It is a hostile organization to the United States. Wouldn't give them a dime and ship them out of New York. New York's too good of a city to house the United Nations. So I would make it clear this is about American interest, and the United Nations is not part of that as American interest. And I would make a list. These are the countries we're willing to work with in the world. These are the countries that are enemies, our enemies. And beware if you're an enemy of ours because you might get the wrath of our military. And these are countries that we don't like. We're not going to work closely with. But they're also not enemies. So you're on notice, but we're not going to do anything to you. Uh, By the way, I would only have embassies in the countries that are friends. I would not have any embassies in Russia, China, in Venezuela, in a lot of these countries. I mean, by having a, or Saudi Arabia, for example, by having an embassy in a country, you're sanctioning the legitimacy of the regime in that country. I don't accept the legitimacy of any regime that does not respect, at least at a basic level, the individual rights of its citizens. Regimes that are, that are authoritarian do not get my respect and therefore do not get a sanction from the greatest country in human history, from the country that represents it as a beacon of freedom. At least that's what the United States of America used to be. So I would say no embassies in those countries. Um, And so that would be first step number one. Second, I would make it clear. I would make it clear that these terrorists, whether they be ISIS, whether they be al-Qaeda, whether it's Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, Muslim Brotherhood. And they're all the same from my perspective. Some of them are more deadly to Americans, others less deadly. Some only want to kill us in the future because they're too busy right now. Others want to kill us right now. They're all the enemy. The enemy is 
Islamic totalitarianism. And the enemy is the ideology of jihadism. Right? Anybody affiliated with these organizations, anybody funding them, anybody, you know, uh, in any way protecting them, is an enemy of the United States. And therefore, should expect the full wrath of the American military. I would tell Israel, destroy your enemies. Destroy Hamas. Destroy Islamic Jihad. You have a green light from us. We don't need to intervene. The Israelis can take care of it. I would destroy ISIS. If you had to put troops on the ground, put troops on the ground. Spend two weeks going house to house and cleaning the place out. Drop as many bombs as necessary to protect our troops and destroy them. Destroy them thoroughly. I would tell Saudi Arabia, Qatar, uh, United Arab Emirates, all of those countries in the Middle East, if you fund, if one dollar of your money gets into the hands of Al-Qaeda or ISIS or any of these other organizations, here's the list, you will be deemed an enemy and we will unleash the military force of the United States against you. Behave yourselves. You do not fund. You do not support the destruction of America. I would tell the Saudis, you do not fund mosques that preach the destruction of the West. You do not fund mosques that preach the destruction of America. You do not fund mosques that preach Sharia law, which means you don't fund mosques, period. You start funding mosques and madrasas all over the world, you are an enemy of the United States, expect to receive the full wrath of the American military force. The same thing with Iran. Iran... You stop funding Hezbollah, you stop funding Hamas, you stop developing nuclear weapons, and if not, we will destroy you. I I used to say after 9-11, you know, I haven't done a lot of foreign policy stuff since then, I used to say we should give Iran the infrastructure their Islamist ideology deserves, which means a mid-age, you know, a dark age infrastructure, you know, of a thousand years ago. Destroy everything technological in that country unless they behave. Now, before I did that, I would dramatically, sixty what 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 Obama didn't do when he had a chance, really support the the opposition in Iran. Give those young kids every piece of intellectual, spiritual, moral support to overthrow the regime as it exists in Iran today. But if they don't do it, it's an enemy, full wrath of the American military. You do that once or twice, and people start behaving. People start respecting you. People start fearing you, and people start leaving you alone. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, all of that. It just disappears. So I'm for a real America first foreign policy. America, uh, an America first foreign policy that places America first, that places the interests, the lives, the property of Americans first, that doesn't, that is not cowered by our enemies. All right, we're going to be back after this break. We'll talk about universal basic income and more about America First. One. You won't hear traditional clear views here. Can we lose you for like a second? It's the Yaron Brooks show. You did? On the Bullet Radio Network. I'm going to have to bring somebody in to to, um, fix my internet. Yeah. Do you have an emergency audio just in case? What would be emergency audio? Um, like if if you dropped, I have a very simple. Uh, I have audio from uh from like an older show of yours that I can play. Oh, okay, it's as simple okay. as yeah, so that. Just, just if pull, I want uh, to from, find from, um, out the nature of Judaism, I don't. What do you call go it? From SoundCloud, there, there's some segments yeah. there that probably fit. Fueled Hopefully, and, we, well, we got two more segments. By Jewish yes. Hopefully people we'll and Jewish money. No. Rabbi Daniel Lappin, on demand on the Blaze Radio Network. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. 800-294-1788. They've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. 
If you're struggling with credit card debt, Consolidated Credit Programs will teach you how to get out and stay out of debt. Call 800-294-1788. 800-294-1788. That's 800-294-1788. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services or by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM80031. Services are primarily educational in nature. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-556-4921. That's 800-556-4921. Again, 800-556-4921. If your credit card bills have gotten out of hand, call Consolidated Credit now. If you're making the minimum payments, but your balance is just not going down, call Consolidated Credit now. If the interest rates on your credit cards are so high, it will take years to get out of debt, call Consolidated Credit now. 800-294-1788. They've helped over 5 million people with credit card debt. They can consolidate your debts into one lower payment, reduce your interest rates, and get you out of debt fast. If you're struggling with credit card debt, Consolidated Credit Credit programs will teach you how to get out and stay out of debt. Call 800-294-1788. 800-294-1788. That's 800-294-1788. Consolidated Credit Counseling Services Incorporated, 5701 West Sunrise Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33313. Not a loan company. Licensed by the New York Department of Financial Services or by the Vermont Department of Financial Regulation. Maryland DM19, Oregon DM80031. Services are primarily educational in nature. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-803-69... 60 to come back. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one -on -one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-803-6951. That's 1-800-803-6951. 30. Pure Opelka with Mike Opelka. Monday, starting at noon Eastern, we'll be back to look at all the events of the weekend, all the stuff that happened in Germany, the craziness. Plus, we're going to look ahead. How do we get education back? How do we take control and actually focus on teaching kids instead of looking at them as experiments, as lab animals that we can poke and pry and get into their heads? We'll deal with that. Be here. Pure Opelka on the Blaze Radio Network. The Yaron Brooks Show. All right, so since we're articulating what an America first foreign policy would look like, let's go for it, right? So we talked about the Middle East a little bit. I would I, I, let the Israelis loose. I would basically take care of business, put the Saudis in their place, make it clear to them the consequence of continuing the support of terrorism all over the world. And uh, I, would, I would, you know, take care of the Iranians, uh, hope for a uh, revolution in Iran uh, for, some, some, uh, for, for some of the Iranians who are more pro-West, uh, pro-secular, anti-jihad, uh, to come to power. But if not, they have to be dealt with. They, they cannot be allowed to continue to fund terrorism. They cannot be allowed to create an axis from, from Iran to Iraq to Syria to, to Lebanon, which is a complete Shiite 
Iranian-led axis of terror. Uh, this, is, this is what George Bush created with his failed foreign policy. This is what Obama encouraged with his failed foreign policy. And this is what uh, Donald Trump is facilitating with what looks like is going to be his completely failed foreign policy. So, you know, uh, none of them, none of them are America first. None of them come close to being uh, America first. So these Shiites, uh, the, the Shiites are winning in the Middle East. There's no question about that. That's why the Saudis are so terrified. Um, but more than that, let's, let's go further. Let's go to Europe. Let's go to uh, Russian aggression in Ukraine. I, I mean, this is my standard for going to war, right? This is the standard for going to war. Are you willing to look your kid in the eye and say, your kid, your son, your daughter, this is a war you should volunteer and go and fight? No, you're not willing to do that? Then it's not a good war. It's not a just war, right? So I believe in only volunteer army, always. I don't believe in a draft. I think draft is one of the most evil things in the world. And that includes, by the way, Israel. I don't believe in the Israeli draft. I think Israel should have a volunteer army. So I don't believe we should go to war unless you believe that it's so important to go to this war that your kid would be willing to fight in. And the standard there is only it's defending the values. Only it's defending the lives and property of America. So should we go to war in Ukraine? No. Should we go to war if Russia invades Estonia? No. Should we go to war if Russia, if, if Russia invades Poland? No. Europeans are rich. Let the Europeans defend themselves. So one of the things I liked about, about Trump, I, didn't, I never liked Trump. I, I, I despise Trump. I still despise Trump. But... One of the things I liked about Trump and the campaign is he, he brought up the issue of, of should we be in NATO? And I don't think we should be. He brought up the question of should we be defending NATO countries that get attacked? I don't think we should be. I don't want my son fighting in Estonia. It's one thing to fight against terrorists after 9-11 because they struck America. They're an enemy of the United States. They want to destroy the United States. But Estonia has nothing to do with us. So I would, I would get out of NATO. I would get out of NATO. I, I don't believe uh, the United States needs to be a member of NATO. I think the Germans and the, and the British and the French are wealthy enough that they could fund NATO themselves and they could defend themselves. They're far richer than Russia, by the way, far, far richer than Russia. So they, they, they have nothing to fear. I mean, this, this is the other thing. Oh, the Russians, they're so dangerous. No, they're not. No, they're not. They should be easy to take care of if, if, the Europeans actually invested in it. But, I, I, you know, I don't... And the same with South Korea. Why are we in South Korea? South Korea is a rich country. Its, it's neighbor to the north is a poor country. I believe South Korea could take care of North Korea if it was left alone to do so. And if it didn't rely on America. And I, by the way, if I were a country, any country in the world, and America said, we'll protect you, I wouldn't trust them for one minute. I would look at the la history of the last 50, 60 years and say, you guys haven't won a single war. Except maybe, you know, uh, the Gulf War in 91 and maybe in Granada or something. You haven't won a single serious war since World War II. Why would I want America to, def to protect me? I, I would want to protect myself. I wouldn't want to defend themselves. So I say, get out of there. Let them protect themselves. Let them defend themselves. I believe in a very strong United States fleet, Navy, that protects the shipping lanes, that protects trade, that does not let China restrict shipping, restrict trade, opens it up for the world. You know, one of the first uh, military actions the United States got involved in was Thomas Jefferson in the very early part of the 19th century during his presidency, ordering the Marines to the Mediterranean to destroy, eviscerate the pirates, the, the, the Muslim pirates who are, who are disrupting shipping. This is the property of the United States, right? The property of American citizens, not the property of the United States, the property of American citizens. And it needs to be protected. So the idea that we have pirates in Somalia and other places when we have the kind of navy we have today is, is ludicrous. We should go there and make it clear what happens to pirates who, who, who you know, try to try to hijack American ships. They die very quickly. That's an American first foreign policy. Robust Navy that protects the shipping lanes, a robust military that destroys our enemies. And by the way, our military is plenty robust today. 
we have the largest. I would cut the 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 the, the, uh, the military. You can cut spending significantly. There's so much waste. We do. We're in 120 different countries today. We're hunting down people in Kenya. Tribal conflicts we're involved in. In 120 different countries. We don't have enemies in 120 different countries. If we just focused on enemies, if we just focused on destroying our enemies, not building them up, then we need a small military, but incredibly powerful. Incredibly powerful. Hey. So that would be an American first. And let me just say, Trump ain't no American first foreign policy president, unfortunately. There's nothing, nothing I see in what he's done. His meeting with Putin, his groveling with the Saudis, his, uh, his refusal to move the Israeli embassy, the, emb- the American embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem because he's afraid of offending the Palestinians or the Saudis or the Egyptians or whoever. Really, none of that is America first. None of that. His commitment in Poland just a few days ago to defend any, any uh, NATO country. So if somebody invades Turkey, Turkey, an Isl- a country on the way towards Islamism, a potentially jihadist country, American kids are going to go send, be sent to defend Turkey. This is what he committed to, including Estonia and Ukraine. And, well, Ukraine is not part of NATO, but Estonia certainly is. Wrong, wrong, bad foreign policy, not America first, and not, by the way, what he promised during the campaign. So, no, I, I don't consider Trump an America first president. Uh, unfortunately, it's sad, but true. I don't think that was he was elected because I don't think Americans understand America first. Uh, I, I think the America first portion that people responded to, unfortunately, tragically, was his anti trade rhetoric and his anti-immigration rhetoric. And let me just be clear. I'm for trade, 100%. We'll talk about it in the next segment. And I'm for immigration. I'm a huge supporter of immigrants and immigration. And I think our immigration system is broken, and it needs to be fixed. Before we talk about legally legal, we have a broken system. Fix it. And that means allowing more legal immigrants into this country, make it easier for people to come to this country, particularly if they're coming here to work. All right, uh, we got Michael on the line who wants to talk about universal basic income. After the break, I'll take that call. Uh, But I do want to talk about steel tariffs. I I want to talk about steel because this is a big issue coming out of the G20 uh, the other day. All right, you're listening to the Ron Brooks Show. We'll be right back after this break. This is the Ron Brooks Show. The Blaze Radio Network. Last sound. Are you guys there? Yeah, I don't know why that. It's like a 10 second pause and it's supposed to be music, but I don't know why it's not. Darts. While darning socks. I'll make a note and let my boss know. In frame. Pretty much any time is a good time to listen to The Blaze Radio. Check out our live shows. Chris Salcedo, welcome to the show on The Blaze. Podcast. This is Pure Opelka, the early edition on The Blaze Radio Network. And on-demand programming. Welcome to the Lawrence Jones Show. I can't thank you enough for joining the program. All at theblaze.com slash radio. Paid law attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you are a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-436-0142. That's 800-436-0142. Direct from the historic newsreels of Selznick Talking Pictures. In cooperation with the International Broadcast Museum of East Sheboygan, this is a 30-second Biography. America's 13th president, Millard Fillmore, was the first Millard and the last member of the Whig elected to office, if you don't count Joe Biden's hair plugs. After the Whig party broke up around 2 a.m. in 1856, Millard invented the popular phrase, here, hold my weave, believing the Whigs would rise again to power. 
He's also credited for sending Commodore Perry to open up Japan for American business and for installing the first bathtub in the White House, just so he could sing his favorite song, Rubber Ducky, You're the One. You make bath time so much fun. Rubber Ducky, I'm awfully fond of you. This has been a 30-second biography brought to you by the Blaze Radio Network. America Now with Buck Sexton. On the left, Democrats, liberals, tearing down America is like their national pastime. They love that. Every night, Buck is in the Freedom Hut. Welcome to the Freedom Hut. Breaking down the important issues. Class anxiety, though, is the defining characteristic of the American experience. America Now with Buck Sexton. Some Democrats I know are very patriotic. Look, it's a radio show. I'm having a little fun, everybody. Let's not get too crazy. 7 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. Non-attorney paid spokesperson. Could your house go into foreclosure? Are you behind on your mortgage payments? Does it seem like the bank has no interest in helping you save your home and you feel like you have nowhere to turn for help? Then we have good news for you. Foreclosure Protection Services can help save your home as they specialize in foreclosure assistance. That's all they do. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, being threatened with foreclosure, have been denied a loan modification, or been the victim of a predatory loan, it's critical that you call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. Their network of attorneys and their agents are available to speak to you now. If you're behind on your mortgage payments, Foreclosure Protection Services can help stop the foreclosure process. Call today before it's too late. New laws are in effect that may save your home. Call Foreclosure Protection Services now at 800-899-8443. 800-899-8443. That's 800-899-8443. The IRS is the most feared agency in the world. You've heard ads from other companies offering to help taxpayers only if they owe over $10,000. Here at Platinum Tax Defenders, we're A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau, and we're proud to be one of the only tax firms in the country who understands that people who owe less than $10,000 need help just as badly. The IRS doesn't care how much money you owe. They'll still garnish your wages and even seize your assets. So whether you owe just a few thousand dollars or hundreds of thousands, Call now for your free tax consultation. If you qualify, we may even be able to reduce your tax debt down to a small fraction of what you owe. So don't wait until the IRS seizes your property and garnishes your wages. Call 800-579-4967 and get your tax problem resolved once and for all. That number again is 800-579-4967. 800-579-4967. 4967. 32, come back. It's Jeff Fisher. You know me from the Jeff Fisher Radio Show. Airs live Saturdays, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern on Blaze Radio. And don't forget about the iHeart Radio app. Now, I know there are times when you can't listen live or, like so many others, want to listen again. I'm here to tell you there are so many ways to download and take me with you. There's no excuse. SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Play Music. Listen when and where you want to the Jeff Fisher Radio Show. 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 From theblaze.com slash radio. Jaron Brook. This show goes by so fast. We're, right, we're, we're, we're at the last segment of the show now. Uh, so feel free to do so. And um, also, I'd appreciate it if you, if you found any of the material today entertaining in any way. Uh, or useful or educational, uh, then follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, Twitter, Yaron Brook, Y A R O N B R O O K, Y A R O N B R O O K, or on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Y Brook, Y Brook, follow me there. And, um, you know, a lot of stuff. I, I put out a lot of videos, uh, I put out a lot of content, I link to a lot of interesting articles. Um, be my friend on Facebook. Well, follow me. I, I guess it's like me. Like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Uh, these things. I, yeah. Hey, Michael. Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. You want to talk about universal basic income or you want to talk about America first? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't care what we talk about, but I just I, I, I respect your views. And I'm a I'm a student of like of Ayn Rand, Milton Friedman, Thomas Sowell, Hayek, all that stuff. And I'm a huge capitalism free market guy cool and i believe markets always work so go ahead so 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 if you believe all that why do you have a question about universal basic income well i'll tell you 
because for years I always heard about how Milton Friedman was sort of in favor of it. Yep. And it kind of, I always kind of thought, oh, well, that's just one of his big flaws, I guess. Yep. And then I, and then I started thinking about Ayn Rand, you know, feelings aren't tools of cognition. So I was like, well, I, I need to verify this. So I finally digged into it. I spent a couple months looking into it. And his, his, uh, it, it, at the surface, it seems antithetical to Marx principles, but it's, his, he's got some pretty sound reason as to why it would be a better alternative to what we have now. Well, the question is, would it be better or would it be best? And the question is, what are we, what are we, what are we arguing for? Are we arguing for improving yeah. the existing system? Or are we arguing for a real revolution, a laissez-faire capitalist revolution? Yeah. And, yeah. And, I, I absolutely agree with you there. Yeah, and there's no question that a universal basic income, if done right, and truly if it replaced every single other redistribution program in the U.S., including Medicare and Social Security and food stamps and everything, if we wiped all those out and we replaced them with some kind of universal basic income, yeah, it would be better. It would still be immoral. You would still be using force to take money from some people and give it to others. You would still be distorting the economy by taxing people and giving handouts to people. So in a moral and practical sense, it's not the best. Is it a marginal improvement over what we have today? Yeah. I, I, you know, just imagine, just think of all the bureaucrats that you would fire who manage all the different government programs as they exist today if you replaced it with something simple like a, a, a universal basic income. Now, could you actually get away with it? That is, is it affordable? Could you, because the basic of a universal basic income is that everybody gets it so that you don't penalize people from going, from getting it. So there's no tax on, on working. And can you afford to do it um, is a big question. But I think the bigger issue is, yeah, it's an improvement, but it's still dramatically immoral. It's in it, in it, by us advocating for it, by, by Milton Friedman advocating, we gave it sanction. We gave the idea of redistribution sanction. And that's what I find offensive. Right? Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I, I think the whole argument is basically, God, we've got to do something about the welfare state. And I guess oh, but what I don't want to do is make it more efficient because then it would be harder to get rid of it. I mean, the fact that it's so inefficient, the fact that it's so destructive, is actually gives us an opportunity to make the case Hey, this shouldn't exist at all. And and look, but we'll never win that battle until we win the moral argument. And to win the moral argument, the redistribution is morally wrong. You can't at the same time fight the moral argument the redistribution is wrong and at the same time say, yeah, but in the meantime, I want to do this massive redistribution. Yeah. Yeah, you're contradicting yourself. And I think Friedman, unfortunately, on many fronts, uh, you know, had this, had this, uh, this issue where – he would, he would give short-term solutions that I actually think long-term undercut the case for freedom and liberty and laissez-faire capitalism. Look, um, Michael, thanks for the question. Thanks for calling. Please call again because I'm sure I'll do a whole show on universal basic income at some point. So really appreciate the call. Uh, we need, we're, okay. we're about to wrap up here. we got about a minute and a half before, oh, right. before you wrap up the show. So thanks for calling. Keep listening. Well, I, I love your work. And, appreciate uh, it. Appreciate it. Great. Everybody out there, read Ayn Rand. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. Um, and um, and uh, look us up at the Ayn Rand Institute, uh, Ayn Rand.org, A-Y-N-R-A-N-D.org. So uh, I want to talk about, uh, at some point, about uh, steel and dumping and, and all this stuff that, that Donald Trump's been talking about later coming out of G20. But we don't have time. We don't have time. So a future show. We'll do about trade and why I am a free trader, why I believe absolutely in free trade. I don't believe in any of this nonsense that we're getting out of, uh, out of the Trump administration. I don't have any problem with the Chinese dumping their steel here. I think it's great. It actually lowers our cost of so many of our goods. Ten. Uh, so, great. You're listening to the Iran Book Show. You have been listening uh, Five, every Sunday, three, this time, this place. Two, Talk to you next week. One. Thing the principles of rational self-interest and individual rights. Are